Good morning, Brother Anthony and Brother Mark. And uh, I know that uh, Sister Sharon and I believe uh, Sister Cynthia, she was watching yesterday, or she looks at it. And Karen, I know you watch. And I'm sure there are others. I get emails every once in a while. And uh, it's not us that's important. It's only the Lord that's important. And so, uh, I had some, uh, a lady I had, uh, Mark and I do a Sunday thing. Uh, we have some singing and a little bit of, uh, uh, we talk about the indwelling life of Christ. Uh, that's what Mark is working on right now. It's on Sundays. There was a woman that works for, for Fall River Housing, and she had sat me in the hall one day and asked me to pray for her son. So I grabbed her hands and we prayed right then. And yesterday, it was downstairs, and she said, uh, she said, oh, I want to, want to call you. But she didn't have my right number, so I gave her the right number. And then she, she says, I want to come to your little Sunday gathering. I says, oh, okay. And uh, she said, I want to tell you, that prayer we prayed in the hall, my son got the best job he's ever had, exactly perfect for him, and at the right amount of money. And she said, I want to thank you. And I said, well, we thank the Lord. She said, as long as you pray for the Lord, and then just leave it in his hands. And every day, if you if you think about repray, don't repray it. Just say, thank you for the answer on that one, Lord. Because uh, the Lord's not deaf. <laughs> he can hear. <laughs> he hears all your requests. So you don't have to keep requesting them. <laughs> I, people do that. I, I, I've done that myself. But I'm getting away from that because he hears them all. And then you just leave it in his hands. That's the tough part for us humans to do. All right, here's some words of encouragement, gang. Um, where are we on? October 21st. <laughs> They're all the same to me. I don't care if I opened up to October or June or January. It doesn't make any difference. But this is October 21st. Okay, to live in my presence consistently, which the Bible tells us we should do, you must expose and expel your rebellious tendencies. We got a lot of those. When something interferes with your plans or desires, you tend to resent the interference. <laughs> Try to become aware of each resentment, however petty it may seem. Don't push those unpleasant feelings down. Instead, let them come to the surface where you can deal with them. Ask my spirit to increase your awareness of your resentful feelings. Bring them boldly into the light of my presence so that I can free you from them. The ultimate solution to rebellious tendencies is submission to my authority over you. Intellectually, you rejoice in my sovereignty, without which the world would be a terrifying place. But when my sovereignty, when my sovereign will encroaches on your little domain of control, you often re react with telltale resentment. The best response to losses or thwarted hopes is praise. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember that all good things, your possessions, your family and friends, your health and abilities, your time, are gifts from me. Instead of feeling entitled to all these blessings, respond to them with gratitude. Be prepared to let go of anything I take from you, but never let go of my hand. Praise God. Huh? What great words. And Bible support on this gang comes from Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, 1 Peter 5, verse 6, and Job 1, verse 21. And uh, those are the words. And you can read those Bible passages and it kind of echoes 
what these words say. They're all connected, because Christ is all connected through all of us. And I'm, uh, yeah, myself, I talk this to Brother Anthony all the time, and, uh, and, and also Mark knows. But, um, you know, I'm having a, I'm actually contacting a lot of these pastors out there. I went to a, a pastor last night, went to a Bible study, and um, nice Bible study. I, it was a little difficult, the language, he, I could understand the English, but uh, it was kind of a, a broken, so, but I had to, you know, so anyway, we were studying, uh, he was, he was uh, in the Old Testament, in Chronicles and in Kings, and uh, couple of sections out of that and Jeremiah and basically it was to show that the Lord the Lord's power and control he wins God wins and that's and we know that I mean you can find that throughout the Bible when you put your faith in the Lord the Lord wins and when you don't you lose you know, sometimes you may win you may have you know enough strength to pull your way through any situation. But in the end, you lose. So, you have to give it all over to the Lord. It's the only way. And it is the right way. And God's way. But uh, anyway, I went to this Bible study and, and one of the things he was saying was, uh, he was talking about other pastors and other churches. And uh, he was kind of echoing how they're all divided. They've, they've divided up into their little cubes. And if you talk to them and say, well, there's no division in Christ, they'll say, that's right. And then you want to look back at them and say, then why are you divided? Why are you separate from the body of Christ and making yourself separate? If I come to you and say, I'm a brother in Christ. I've been saved. Okay? And you want to turn and say, well, no, you have to accept Christ to be saved. I look at you and go, so you don't take, in other words, I have. you have to see this. In other words, you have to do it. You have to see it with your own eyes. I think the Bible has stuff to say about that too. Okay? I mean, <laughs> why on God's earth would I want to walk around this world with the highest name in the world and the Savior of the world and the creator of all things right here on my shirt. Why would I want to walk around like that and not totally believe it? I sleep in this shirt. And if I and I've joked around a little bit with people if, if I put it on my underwear and actually I kind of joke with my wife, which really to me aren't jokes. I'd have it tattooed all over my body. And I'm thinking of doing that. I wouldn't want to do the ink tattoo because I don't believe the Lord wants us to defile this beautiful uh, creation he's made for us. Even though if I put the name of Jesus on it, it wouldn't be defiling it at all. Okay, But I'm kind of a chicken on the pain aspect of it. But they do make body paint that can wash off. So I'd have to do it every day. I've talked about putting his name in a body wrap on my car. My wife, she, she didn't want me to do that one. Okay. I told her I want to get rid of a lot of the stuff in our apartment and just put his name all over the walls. I've already got his name on the outside of the door. Put a big cross, just like what's on the shirts, on the outside of the door. And it's staying there. I pay rent. <laughs> my door. <laughs> I'll put up what I want. <laughs> you know. But if if they, if they, if where I lived made a big issue of it and I had to take it down or get thrown out and, and, and create more, you know, I would have to pray for those people that want, that want the stuff. I have to pray for them and ask God, expose yourself to them, Lord. Change their hearts, you know. And if he wanted that sign still up on, he'd change their hearts. I know he would. I don't have to guess. You know? And I know he sits right here with me now. He's doing this with me. He's inside. And he's out there this morning making my path straight in his way for whatever i got to do. 
He's setting up the contacts he wants me to deal with. Will I miss some? Will I make mistakes? Will I fall down? Yes. Always will happen. I get less and less the more time I just spend with him, you know. You know. And it was a good one for me this morning because I do, I get frustrated. I have contact with some of these pastors. They don't even have the courtesy as a Christian to contact another Christian outside their, their little church center. That's wrong. Christ is the head of the church. There are no denominations in Christ. It's one Christ, period. And that begins to make me angry to see all these churches, Pentecostals, black Catholics, blah. And I'm a, I'm a baptized Catholic. I love, some, I've read stories on the saints. I love some of those saints. They believed. They were hooked up with Christ. But now, the devil's weaned his way into all these different churches. 501c, not a good thing. They've gone after them. They give control of the church to the state. Well, maybe the state ain't using it now, but there will come a day, brothers and sisters, when the state will use it. Because it was set up through them by the devil. He's a sly fox. Started in the garden. <laughs> Brother Anthony knows. All right, folks, look, I could go on forever again. And I don't like to go on forever. Well, yeah, I, I won't go. I'm going to go on forever with the Lord, but. So I want everybody to get a shirt, and I want everybody to get rid of their earthly clothes and all the stuff they advertise for this world, and just advertise our Savior's name. Would you do that? Huh? I've been doing this walk around in, in different variations of this shirt for 15 years. And you know what? I know that Mark wears it when we go out on the street, okay? I've seen Sherry down the hall in my building wear it, going to church once in a while. I know there's a lady in the office that wears it when she goes to, you know, so people do wear them once in a while. Uh, I want it every day. And use them as pajamas, they're great, you know. That way, if he calls you in the middle of your, of your sleep, okay, or the angels come down to for the harvest, it'd be hard to harvest. In the name of the one who sent him, the, the, the harvest hand would be take you up. <laughs> Praise God. I hope. I know <laughs> that much. Well, look at <clears throat> God bless all of you. And uh, have, a, have a wonderful, peaceful day. No matter what happens, you will because... You can't have a bad day with Jesus, ever. And I don't care what happens to you today. That was like my sister, uh, Cynthia. She's got a cold. She was a little pissed off at the guy that sneezed on her in the market or whatever. And I wrote her, I says, no, you got to thank the Lord. Everything that happens to you today is controlled by the Lord. Everything. We have free will. He's not touching on our free will. We can go do what the heck we want to do. But you, if you, then you'll miss half the blessings that he's setting up for your life because you went and did your own, made your own blessings. But we're going to make some of those, some of those mistakes. I, I, because we're human, we're just going to keep doing. It. Although we do less and less if we just give all our time and all our soul and all our mind and all our heart to him. Okay, so everybody order a shirt, throw all your clothes away and just walk walk around the world wherever the Lord has you wearing the shirt. And get a hat too. <laughs> Even you ladies, you could get a, a lady hat. But put Jesus on it. <laughs> oh, he would love it. I'll make it a shirt, so just contact me. Cuckoo, C-U-C-K-O-O, -O, the number four, Jesus, the number two, 
at AOL.com. Give me your size and give me an address and a phone number to contact you. And when I get it done, I'll mail it to you. If you'll wear them every day, I'll send you, I'll make you seven of them. But you can have a different one every day. Same color, though. I like the bright color with the black. It stands out. People could see it from miles away. <laughs> I was doing colors, but you got a whole, whew, too many colors. All right, gang. Have a great day. Peace, brothers and sisters. Bye-bye. <laughs>